WNBA Draft Lottery, presented by State Farm. We are here in wonderful Bristol, Connecticut, home of our ESPN headquarters and the 2024 WNBA Draft Lottery. Four teams that have all won championships before are here. The Indiana Fever fans are excited. They last won in 2012. Phoenix fans are lined up. The X Factor was huge when they won in 2014. California Love looking for California Luck. The Sparks last won a ship in 2016 and the Seattle Storm fans trying to get back to 2020 waving those towels like it's climate pledge. We find out who gets the number one overall pick to help those championship hopes next. Can you picture it? A new image of the league is developing. We've witnessed back-to-back -back greatness with the Aces. Flashes of super teams and stars across the league. But today, we welcome new depth and dimension to the frame. The Draft Lottery, a chance for teams to capture a game changer, a future MVP, a player who will leave an indelible image on the league. The future is coming into focus, but this is only a snapshot of what it could become. Four teams relying on the way the balls bounce for a new landscape to unfold. Today, we reveal who receives that flash of inspiration. The WNBA Draft Lottery starts right now. Hello and welcome into the studio for the 2024 WNBA Draft Lottery presented by State Farm. I'm Andrea Carter and joining me to break it all down, we have our Hall of Famer, Carolyn Peck, and we also have the 2023 Coach of the Year for the Connecticut Sun, Stephanie White. Ladies, are you excited for today? Oh, if the buildup to today off last season, there's going to be some impact rookies that come in this year. Dre, I've been waiting for this day since the fall. Season ended, so let's go. Let's <laughs> we, get a move. we have seen some of those talented players already playing in our slate of games today. I know you two are excited, but you're probably not as excited as the team representatives that we have here with us today. Four teams vying for that top number one overall pick, starting with the Indiana Fever. Joining us to represent the Fever, we have 2023 Rookie of the Year. Their number one overall pick last year, Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah, you had a phenomenal season last year. As you look back, what would it mean to the Fever franchise to get a back-to-back -back number one overall pick? I think it would be really special. We're building something really, really special um, in Indiana. And to add more talent like that, just like another number one pick, would be amazing. And you all were top two in the league when it came to offensive rebounds and second chance points. Those hustle plays, that's what the Fever fans love. So a number one pick to add to that could be huge for the franchise. Representing the Phoenix Mercury, we have first-year owner Matt Ishbia and his daughter, Jamie. Matt. When you look back at the Phoenix Mercury, the last time you all had a number one overall pick, you picked Brittany Griner. How do you envision the Mercury fan base embracing another number one overall pick? Yeah, they're really excited. We're excited about it. BG has been a huge part of our success along with Diana was the number one pick, but we're hoping to get it again this year. My lucky charm, Jamie, what do you think? I'm really excited. I hope we get the first pick. There we go, Jamie. I know all of the X Factor also hope you get the first pick. You all were second in the league in attendance last season, so you all packed it out. Joining us from the Los Angeles Sparks, we have head coach Kurt Miller. Coach, the Sparks have missed the last three playoffs, but you can't forget this is an organization that's won three championships, the last one being in 2016. What type of player does the number one overall pick need to be to get you all back in championship conversations? Yeah, first, dynamic players available in this upcoming draft draft, but excited about adding an impactful player in the locker room as much as on the court. High character, someone that's coachable and wants to learn from these great veterans in the locker room. I know you all had a fierce defense last season as well, so high-level defender, huge when it comes to being a part of the Los Angeles Sparks. And finally, we have the head coach of the Seattle Storm, Noel Quinn, joining us. And you're a coach now, Noel, but you were a player. And back in 2018, you won a championship with three number one picks alongside you, Brianna Stewart, Sue Bird, and Jewel Lloyd. Jewel Lloyd is still with the organization. What would a number of one overall pick look like alongside Jewel to win a championship? Right. The amount of aggressive defenses that Jewel received this year with blitzes and boxing ones. Um, just imagine a number one overall pick complimenting Jewel and kind of giving him, her some relief on that end, um, as well as just uh, leadership, right? Jewel expe uh, 
uh, exhibited this year just with her voice and um, her work ethic. So just uh, having some uh, guidance with that with the younger player would be excellent. Yeah, it was so much fun to watch Jewel and her leadership. You know what else she did? She hit a lot of threes. You know, we're top did. three in the league when it came to making threes, so adding to that for Seattle could be huge. When it comes to getting the number one overall pick, there are certain probabilities for each team. So here's a look at what that is. The Fever have the most chances to land the top pick, and they are guaranteed at least the third pick. The Mercury have the second best chance, followed by the Sparks, and then the Storm. And we have to take a look at the latest mock draft projections, according to our M.A. Vopel. At number one, the 2023 AP Player of the Year, Caitlin Clark, followed by the 2021 AP Player of the Year, Paige Beckers, at number two. Then it's 2023's WBCA Defensive Player of the Year, Cameron Brink, SEC Sixth Woman of the Year, Camilla Cardoso, and Big East Most Improved Player, Aaliyah Edwards. Welcome back here at our set. Ladies, so much to break down, but CP, I'm going to start with you because you've been a head coach and a GM at the WNBA level. When you look at those four teams that we just met all the representatives for, which team would benefit the most from getting the number one overall pick? I think the team that needs it the most and would benefit, I think, is the Indiana Fever. Indiana hasn't been in the playoffs since 2015. And you know who was the head coach? Well, it was Stephanie White, and she was coaching Tamika Catchings. Imagine adding a player like a Caitlin Clark to have the center of Aaliyah Boston. You got the four player in Nalissa Smith. She can open up the floor. She can get inside the defense. We already saw the logo threes that she's been able to hit this season. Over 3,000 points she has scored. And um, so I think that adding a Caitlin Clark to the Indiana Fever could be definitely uh, a value. And I think oftentimes we think number one pick equals success immediately. And that's not always the case. And we have to be patient. This is a process. No doubt it doesn't translate into immediate success. But if we think about the history of the league, and traditionally each team has been built through their draft, right? Minnesota, with the Minnesota Lynx, you had Simone Augustus. Then it took some time and you got Maya Moore, right? And then you win four championships. Seattle, when they had Jewel Lloyd and then they had Brianna Stewart. And then it takes some time and you win a couple of championships. So it doesn't mean immediate success. But when you think about Indiana and putting all those young pieces together, getting them experience, winning at that next level, boy, that certainly could be scary. Yeah, I want to go back to you, Steph, because we're in interesting times with so many players having the option to stay in school. We just looked at five players that all have the option. If they want to stay in school, they can. From your vantage point, what factors into that decision? Do I stay in college or do I start my pro career? You know, absolutely, of course, it's an individual decision. But when you think about the different dynamics that these players are, are thinking about, is it some Something like NIL, right? Is it something like, okay, do I have an opportunity to win a championship, you know, in the next year or not? That might make my decision a little bit easier. The next thing that I would think about is like someone like Caitlin Clark. Are you bored in college? Like, are you ready to just take it to the next level and be a pro and hone your skills and work on your game every single day? Well, you've got Paige Breckers that has that option as well. But here's the thing. If you are coming back to college I think you've got to really consider do you have an opportunity to compete for a championship. The other thing, and okay, I'm not a mom, but the mom and me, get your education, <laughs> yes. get that degree. Yes. I think that that's important as well. But people say NIL, that can go with you. You can still get those endorsements. And another thing that could be a huge factor for this draft in particular is the expansion draft. So we will have to see what happens when we get to April. But even if some of those players that we just looked at decide to stay in college, there is plenty of talent on the board. When it comes to players with no eligibility left, Tennessee's Rakia Jackson is a 2023 All-SEC first team. J.C. Sheldon for Ohio State, 2022 All-Big Ten first team. Charisma Osborne was 2023 All-Pac-12 for UCLA. Liz Kitley for Virginia Tech, two-time ACC Player of the Year. And Indiana's Mackenzie Holmes, 2023 Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. So the accolades are of plenty when it comes to this draft class. And when you look at that list of players with no eligibility left, who do you think benefited the most from taking their fifth year? I, I think J.C. Sheldon did. I mean, she suffered with injuries all last season. She's been able to get stronger. She's always been in great shape. She can distribute the basketball. 
high motor, high basketball IQ, and the ability to play multiple positions. Versatility is key in the WNBA, and that added year of experience has definitely helped J.C. Sheldon. And to me, it's Charisma Osborne. You know, Charisma Osborne is a player who could have come out last year, who certainly would have would have been drafted. But I think another year under her belt, playing with players like Kiki Rice, getting a Lauren Betts, which is a lot like a post player that you're going to have at the WNBA level, is important. Learning how to play with the ball in your hands in that point position and on the perimeter in the wing. The major improvement for Charisma Osborne has been her three-point shooting. It's been the efficiency from the three-point line. Having another year to really work on that, hone that skill, I think was important. Well, regardless of which players choose to remain in college or choose to start their pro career, the number one overall picks have had huge impacts when it comes to winning championships. Coach White, I know you said it takes time to build, but the numbers also show that once that time sets in and once teams can work with their number one overall picks, they have combined for 38 championships, 13 MVP awards, and 124 all-star selections. So it is important to get that pick right. Again, we will see who gets the number one overall pick coming up next. We are minutes away from Bethany Donovan, who is the head of league operations, revealing the 2024 WNBA draft lottery order. This anticipation, the excitement, the energy. I know the represent representatives are nervous. I don't think Bethany's nervous. I think she's ready. We will see who gets that number one overall pick coming up next. The 2024 WNBA Draft Lottery is presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And in part by U.S. Bank, a proud changemaker partner of the WNBA. PN's coverage of the 2024 WNBA Draft Lottery, presented by State Farm. I wanna win, I wanna go, I wanna touch all of my goals. You That's the Cardoso effect. All of my circle is on the pathway to great. Edwards lays it She has elevated her game. She's doing it all. And it's the point where you could really say that you made it. We've got some players that are getting ready to come into the league. We're going to break down some of them. Steph, who are you going to break down first? I'm going to start with the most exciting player in college basketball right now, and that's Caitlin Clark. And look, we all know about the Logo 3s. Where I'm most impressed in terms of her growth is her ability to get to the rim. Not just get to the rim, but get to the rim and finish with contact. She got stronger a season ago. Now she can absorb contact. Finish in the paint off of two feet. And if you're a post player who likes to rim run, she will find you all day, every day. And there's no doubt about it. She's going to draw a crowd. So if she beats one defender, look at the collapse. Four defenders, eyes on Caitlin Clark. She makes the right read, finds her shooter on the spray out, able to knock it down. And then I think this is another level of improvement, reading two layers of defense. So you've got the first. The post player shows herself early. Where's the second and third layer of defense? Are we going out to three? Are we dropping to our big? She reads it perfectly, drops it on the dime. Wow, the player that I'm looking at in this coach's corner is really the unicorn from the Pac-12. She can play inside and out, and her name is Cameron Brink. She does a phenomenal job of really getting herself in great position. And the thing that is really intriguing about her, in one offensive possession, she can operate multiple actions. We've seen one, two, three now. After the screen, she's going to post up. When you've got a player like Cameron Brink that you can move around, that can do so many different things, hey, it's a value. And it's not only offense, that's what she does so well. A shot blocker, keeping it in bounds and then off and running. She can leave the break, run in transition, recognize where her options are. She could stop and pull up for the three, this time running all the way to the rim. But where did Asia Wilson make her living this year? It was at that elbow area, and that's what Cameron Brink can do. She can shoot the three. She can drive it left, and she can also spin it back to her right. Her versatility definitely will translate very well into the WNBA. Well, ladies, there is 
plenty of talent when it comes to this potential draft class. And we are moments away from Bethany Donovan, head of league operations, revealing the 2024 WNBA draft lottery order. But first, here's how the WNBA draft lottery works. There are 14 balls, numbered 1 through 14, placed in a lottery machine and mixed. There are 1,001 four-digit combinations when you select four numbers out of 14. 1,000 of those combinations are assigned to the four teams that did not make the playoffs in 2023. The odds of winning are based on the two-year cumulative record of the four non-playoff teams. Here are the chances of each of the four teams when it comes to winning the number one pick. This also serves as the number of lottery ball combinations each team was assigned. Because the Fever had the worst cumulative record, as you just saw, they cannot fall any lower than third. Indiana, Phoenix, Los Angeles, and Seattle are hoping their four-digit combinations land them the number one pick today. The lottery was conducted a short time ago under the supervision of the accounting firm of Ernst & Young. Those results have been delivered to our studio in sealed envelopes. So now it's time for the 2024 WNBA Draft Lottery presented by State Farm. Bethany Donovan, take it away. Thank you, Andrea, and good luck to all four teams. The fourth pick in the 2024 WNBA Draft presented by State Farm goes to the Seattle Storm. Congratulations to Noelle Quinn and the Seattle Storm. Seattle missed the playoffs for the first time since 2015. Haven't had a lottery pick since 2016 when they took Brianna Stewart at number one. Picking third will be the Phoenix Mercury. Congratulations to Matt Ishbia and his daughter Jamie and all of Phoenix. This is the eighth lottery pick in franchise history. They missed the playoffs the, this past season for the first time since 2012. All right, so we have, we're down to two teams. We know two picks, we know the order. CP, what do each of these teams that we just saw need to add to their roster? Well, I think for the Indiana Fever, the area that I think they could really benefit the most from is at that point guard spot. And having someone that can distribute the basketball, a, de a decision maker, and be able to move a Christy Wallace to the wing, Erica Wheeler be that defensive force, but somebody that can run, can run a team. And then for LA, I, you know, how do you pass up on a possible Caitlin Clark? But to get a Cameron Brink or a Camilla Cardoso and be able to move around the Agumake sisters, yeah. that would be pretty good. They got options. Yeah, yeah, no, there, there are definitely options. And I, and I think when you're in this situation, too, obviously if you have the number one pick and you have an opportunity uh, to get a Caitlin Clark, you know, that can be a, a franchise changing player for, for a long time. But at each one of these positions, you get the best player available. Yeah, we will see who's going to get that top pick, whether it's Indiana or whether it's L.A. Let's go back to Bethany Donovan for the picks. We're down to the final two teams vying for the top pick. The second pick goes to the Los Angeles Sparks. Los Angeles Sparks, we talked about the leadership of Neka Agumake. They missed the playoffs this past season for the first time since 2012. They'll get the second pick. And that means the first pick in the 2024 WNBA Draft presented by State Farm goes to the Indiana Fever. The Indiana Fever. Back to back, number one overall picks. They had Aaliyah Boston last season. Who are they going to choose this season with their number one overall pick? Aaliyah, congratulations. Thank you. No jumping jacks, no cartwheels, no, no nothing. nothing. My shoes, I told you. I need oh, it's the shoes. shoes. Okay, she's got yeah, yeah. Right. platform heels. <laughs> Aaliyah, congratulations on Thank the number you. one overall pick. What do you think this means for your team, for the franchise, and for all of Indiana? I mean, I think it's just going to be another talented player that we can use to help build us to be back to the franchise that the Fever was at. And so I'm super excited um, for this upcoming draft. Your team was so young last season, and now you're going to add a, a rookie that will potentially impact 
kind of leadership can you bring to this team to help them now? You came so close. We're in the conversation for the playoffs all season long for the most part to make that next step. Yeah, um, just continue. I think the first way of being a leader I can show is just by the work I put in um, on and off the court, um, especially with recovery, just making sure that I'm doing the right things for my body, but also just talk to talk to them. I think that's going to be important because I had great vets that talked to me, especially when there were moments where I was just putting a lot of pressure on myself, you know, being the number one pick, um, the the goals that I wanted to achieve um, and also helping my new teammate achieve the goals that she wants to achieve because I mean we are all so excited for the experience the opportunity to be um, in the league and be a number one pick so just super excited. Aaliyah you've got one year under your belt uh, but a young team a young core in Indiana what's it going to take for you to get to that next level to get into the playoffs? Just continuing to play together and being disciplined I think that is something that's super important because yes we're a young team but at the end of the day I feel like just our knowledge of the game and being able to play together getting a good feel for each other early on will be able to help us throughout the season. I got, I got one. Yeah, yeah. What do you think Lynn Dunn's doing right now? <laughs> I just can't wait to see the, the interview, the content that Fever is going to post right now. I know they already. I just know it. I just know it. They're, they're going to come with it for sure. They're going to come with it for sure. And we've got the watch party as well out there in Indiana. This is what happened when they found out they got the number one overall pick. The excitement, the cheers, the smiles, big things coming potentially for the Indiana Fever. Again, back to back, number one overall picks all of the picks are in we have the order behind us and this is what it looks like when we get the 2024 WNBA draft lottery congratulations to all four teams congratulations to the Indiana fever we'll break it down a little bit more coming up next coaches we already know the order but when you look at this draft list and the draftees who is the most in WNBA ready right now I, to me, I think it's Caitlin Clark. You know, I think it's Caitlin Clark, not just because she can score the basketball really at all three levels, but she got stronger. She's gotten better every year. She put on six pounds of muscle from a season ago. I mean, she can get to the rim. She can finish. She can also facilitate. A year ago, she led the nation in scoring and assists. The only other player to do that is Trey Young on the men's side. And she reads the game. She plays in a lot of two-man game at Iowa in that system. There's a lot of read and react in that system, and I think that translates to being able to make plays in the WNBA. The post player that I think that's most uh, pro-ready, I think, is Aaliyah Edwards from the UConn Huskies. She's averaging almost 16 points a game, shooting 58%. They play some of the toughest competition. That What is demanded from Gino Ariema helps these players to be pro-ready and their versatility because she can swing from the four to the five. She has the face-up game. She's not afraid to get on the class and play through physicality. I think that Aaliyah Edwards would be a great value to anyone early in this draft. Well, you mentioned Aaliyah Edwards, her team, again, like we said, taking on North Carolina next CP. I'm going to come right back to you. Outside of Aaliyah Edwards, what else are you looking for in this matchup? In this matchup, um, how can Connecticut take care of the basketball? Yeah. The uh, North Carolina Tar Heels defense is what their team is built on this year. And so can they speed up Connecticut? Can they turn them over, not allow them to execute in the half court? And Steph White, you're, you're a WNBA coach. When it comes to intangibles and what you're watching as you watch mm -hmm. some of these kids play, what are you looking for? Coachability, hustle plays, grit, toughness, the ability to have a motor, play with multiple levels of effort. That versatility, the talent, all of those things, so important when it comes to the draft lottery and when it comes to success at the college level. So we're going to get you out to a top 25 matchup. This has been fun. It's been, it's been great. Blast. Huh? Yeah. Again, blast. congratulations to the Indiana Fever, Seattle Storm, Los Angeles Sparks, Phoenix Mercury. We had a great time breaking it all down. The watch parties had a ton of energy from all across the country. The most energy, of course. Somebody get Lynn Dunn. Coming from the Indiana Fever, they will have the number one overall pick in the 2024 draft lottery.